Bonjour, welcome to Miss Lucy's Classic Cajun Culture and Cooking. And I'm your host, Miss Lucy. And today, I'm catching crabs, and I think I got some Louisiana blue crabs here, which are my favorites. Then I'll be going into the kitchen and making some good crab stew. I can almost taste the good food. So you stay with the chat, don't go away. We'll be right back. Oh, I got one, yes. The Louisiana Seafood Marketing Board is a proud sponsor of Lucy's Classic Cajun Culture and Cooking Show. The Bayou State enjoys an outstanding culinary tradition. At the center of that tradition is seafood. And no wonder, Louisiana is one of the nation's leading seafood suppliers. And the Louisiana Department of Economic Development. Whether it's crawfish processing or meat packing, Louisiana is the business location for food processing. With infrastructure, site selection assistance, and workforce training. Louisiana, the shape of food technology. What makes Louisiana so special? Our beautiful bayous and grand plantation homes surrounded by old oak trees. Our music and joie de vie. Our unique way of cooking the bounty we harvest from the land and the water. It's our communities, our businesses, our people. That's why I love Louisiana and why I want to share my precious Cajun heritage with you. Hello there. Welcome to my kitchen. Today I'm really excited about what I have to cook because I'm cooking my favorite seafood, crabs. Later on, I'll show you more about soft shell crabs when we visit Mr. Cultus Pearson, who has a soft shell crab operation in Lacombe, Miss Louisiana, on the north shore of Lake Pontchartrain. Now, I like crabs cooked any way that Mama would prepare them, and today I'm going to share with you one of her favorite crab stew. Uh, I like them fried myself, but uh, you know, Mama cooked this more often than she did anything else because it was easier for her to prepare. What I've done here, I have a roux that I've already made. That's oil and flour. You brown that real dark because your stew has got to be dark for it to taste good. You cook that real slow. Keep stirring constantly until it reaches that chocolate brown, dark chocolate brown consistency. Then you add your water to it. Of course, that's what I have done. And I've cooked this for about 30 minutes after my, my uh, roux got to this color. So actually, it's ready to put the other ingredients in it. So first of all, I'm going to put my onions in here. This is onions that I've chopped up pretty fine. You don't want them to be big, because actually, uh, you don't want them to be chunky. because. Cajuns don't use chunky vegetables. We chop them up, okay? So there we go. We've got another thing to stir. Keep stirring and stirring. Then I'm going to put onion tops in here. And parsley. Yes. Now this has got to cook also for about 30 minutes. Now you want your gravy to be real thick because the seafood will make it get well, kind of more water in it, because seafood has a tendency to, to make water, okay? Now, look how pretty, oh my gosh, almost could eat it like that. So let me get this here, all right? Next to this, of course, for time element, I have to throw my crabs in now. These are gorgeous crabs that we have gotten, and I'm gonna put all these crabs in here. And we're gonna cook them. Oops, don't wanna go in that pot, huh? wants to get out. Oh, look at this. Now, these crabs I have cut in half. Actually, what you can do is leave them whole if you want to, but I was kind of in a hurry to cook this so I could eat it, and so I'm just rushing things a little bit. And you take all the top shell off, and you just take that flap off, and you cut them in half. You wash all your fat and stuff out of there. That's what I like to do anyway. And put the body's in there. Now, yeah. you stir that and you cover it. Because, man, there's nothing like roux and crab meat. It is just wonderful. It tastes so good. That crab meat just gives that roux just a wonderful taste. Now, 
to show you how to do the crab claws. I've already pre-cracked these, so I'm gonna add these to that pot. But first, I'm gonna show you how to do, look at this claw, wow! <laughs> That's a big one. So we're gonna do it like this. Oh, goodness. And this is all you need to do. Just go ahead and crack it just once. Throw them in there, which I'm gonna throw these in there. Ooh, there's another big one. Must belong to that other crab. So, okay. Add these in here, because crab claw meat is just wonderful. It tastes delicious, like all crab meat does, but it's real good. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna crack these two, because I'm not letting anything go to waste today. I'm gonna use all of these. Okay, very good. Now, okay, I'm gonna get this out of the way. Yeah, put this in the back here. Whew, messy. All good cooks are messy cooks. Now, I gotta cover this real good and let that cook. Ooh, good, 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 good. Mmm, man, that flavor, I can almost taste it now. Of course, now you know I'm gonna have to cook some rice for, to eat with this because. This goes on, on top of rice. Now, Mama never had shrimp when we went crabbing. When we got home from crabbing, we always just made crab stew or fried crabs or crab gumbo or whatever. But today, I wanted to just throw an extra ingredient in there because I have access to these gorgeous Louisiana shrimp. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna throw this in. You know how Cajuns throw everything into the pot. So I'm just gonna go ahead, throw this in here, wipe my hands, cause, whew, goodness, yeah. Okay, wow, what a luscious pot. Mmm, mm, mm, mm. Of course, now I'm gonna have to season this with my standby. Let me use my grandmother's salt shaker. This is her salt shaker. Okay, my grandmother would always do this. Every time I'd go visit her and she'd cook for me, this is how she would season. So now we've got the salt, we're gonna have the pepper, and I'm not measuring, because you know how Cajuns are, they don't measure, but the recipe's on the screen, and my Louisiana red hot sauce. Now we're gonna let all this cook for about 30, 40 minutes, because I have a big pot. You don't wanna overcook your seafood. You wanna stir it up real good, let it cook all together like this. Wow, oh my gosh, I wish we had smell-o-vision. Mm. Now, this looks like a big pot of gumbo, but it's not, because gumbo is more watery than stew is. Stew is real thick. Now, to go with this, while this is cooking, I'm going to fix us some cabbage. So, I've already, let me see, let me turn my pot on. That's also important. You're going to start browning your bacon. I used to never eat cabbage, but since I learned how to cook it like this, I love it. I'm going to brown this real good. Then, of course, I'm gonna round it all together with my cabbage. I've already cut some cabbage up. Just throw all this in here, okay? Now, let me show you how to cut this up because some people chop it too fine and it cooks down to nothing. So this is how I chop this. Now, one thing about this dish, I like to cook it down and brown my cabbage and my bacon real brown and cook it down. But of course, some people don't like it cooked that way. They like it crispy. So it's up to you. I know when my daughter Melissa comes home, I always turn my fire down a little bit. Okay. I always cook it just crispy for her because actually that's how she likes it and she doesn't come home that much. So now I'm gonna let all this cook down. I'm gonna brown it all together and I'm gonna put salt and pepper on top of it and stir it up real good. I'll see how crab stew's cooking. Let me stir in here just one more time. Very good. Oh, this is gorgeous. Yeah, boy, we're gonna have a good meal today. All to the, oh. Now this is really, you can hear it sizzling. It's gonna brown the bacon, I'm gonna let it cook down, and then I'll be able to serve it as soon as it's cooked, because you don't want this to get cold. So we've got everything cooking. We just gotta wait until the crabs are done, which won't take long. Now I've promised you that uh, we would learn more about Louisiana blue crabs and how soft shell crabs are produced. Let's take a look at it. 
This reminds me of the early morning sunrise when I was a girl and went crabbing in Cameron, Louisiana. The whole family would sit along the bank with our baited nets and waited for the crabs to show up. It was a time for family members to relate to each other as we worked together to catch our dinner, something we've lost in our busy lives today. This crab fisherman uses a method that seems much faster and easier, but with the same results. Beautiful blue Louisiana crabs. Look at those claws. Beneath this grand oak tree, I'm visiting with Mr. Cultus Pearson. He's one of the grandfathers of the soft shell crab industry. Let's find out why. When that crab is getting up close to maturity, especially the male crab, it may be nine to 10 months oh. between the molds. But let's, let's take when he first starts off at, at, in an egg, they might both molt every three or four days. And it, and it progressively gets slower as, uh -huh. as they get right. a, a little bit larger. The larger they get, the less The longer right. span it is. This is normal crabs that you bring in, no, this, right? No, this, to, this, this crab that you're going to shed and make soft shell crabs out of, they call them peelers. Oh, right, okay. And, and the peelers start off with a what they call a white line peeler, and that peeler is somewhere from from three to from three days up to about ten or twelve days from molting. All right. And the red line peelers are the ones that's going to molt, molt within three days. The main thing is is to be able to separate those crabs so that they can shed with one another mm -hmm. and not be eaten. And the way I work it in my system, the ones that the white lines, I put them upstairs. Uh -huh. The red lines, I put them downstairs. Right. Then every second or third day, depending on the temperature of the water, I go through those crabs that's in the upstairs part, and the ones that have advanced to, to, the, end, to the red line, they go in the bottom trays, and they won't eat one another down there. And the reason that I proceeded to develop the system is that I was shedding my soft shell crabs on the north shore of Lake Pontchartrain. Mm -hmm. So I started looking for some way mm -hmm. to shed those crabs up here. And I started off by picking up the ones that were going to shed in the early part of the night, the ones that already cracked open. But then after a while, the crabs started dying. And, then, and I thought that maybe if you kept the water filtered and real clear, uh -huh. everything would be all right, but it wasn't. The culprit is nitrite. Then I got in touch with Miss Harriet Perry over at Gulf Coast Research Lab in Mississippi, and she gave me the principles of how biological filters work. Between her and I, we designed a system where we could purify our water, and I could bring all my crabs from the lake up here. People are eating more soft shell crabs now due to the availability in restaurants because of crab shedding operations like Mr. Pearson's. They're easier to eat than the hard shell crabs because the shell is edible and you don't have to pick the meat. And these luscious creatures are delicious any way you prepare them. Did those soft shell crabs look great? They tasted good too. They were delicious. I know I ate them. Now to accompany the crab stew that we're cooking, I'll show you what salad and dessert that I would serve with this. Of course, let me check my, oh, look at this. See what I told you would happen? It's all, well, I tell you, this really goes well together. Now this, at this point, is when I would actually turn my fire off for Melissa, but for myself, I would keep cooking it. So that's what I'm gonna cook them the way I like them today. I'll lower my fire and I'm gonna just, oh, look in my crab stew. See, I told you this would be gorgeous and smell so good. Yeah, okay. Now we're gonna do the salad. Of course, you know Cajuns don't do fancy salads. They all do plain and simple salads. So mama always had her tomato and cucumber and lettuce and that's why we had it was the reason is that we grew it on the farm. So actually the way I'm gonna cut this lettuce, I'm just gonna kinda slice it a little bit like this. 
because, and I use this serrated knife. They say if you use a serrated knife, it's not gonna turn brown. So that's what I'm, I'm gonna do. And this is how mama cut her lettuce up. She always, of course, mama didn't have a cutting board. And oops, put it right here. This is how she arranged it on her plate. It wasn't really fancy, but now, like I said, we always peel our cucumbers at home because mama couldn't stand the peelings. And of course, I like the peelings, but you know, mama did it her way. She could do that. She was the main cook. And now, of course, I always peel my cucumbers. Now, and this is the way, see, mama didn't have a cutting board and I've seldom used one either because one day a man came home and he said, you're gonna cut your hands off. And I said, no, mama didn't cut hers off. She lived to be over 80 years old and she cooked every day. So, and this is how you slice your tomatoes in your hand. Of course, the chefs would do it like this, but I, this is how I do it. Plain old Cajun cooking. Now, what we used with this was salt and pepper. We never had any salad dressings in those days. I don't think they were invented when I was a girl. That tells you how old I am, right? <laughs> Let me stir in this. Oh my gosh, it smells so good. Mm mm. Okay. Now for the bread pudding that I promised you the dessert I was going to show you. And I have already scalded some milk here. And so I'm going to go ahead and use this to soak my bread. But first, I'm going to show you how I cut my bread up. This is the French bread. You can use the regular bread, because at home we always had leftover bread, and you know Cajuns don't waste the thing that they have. So we always use the leftover old, oh, I guess week old bread if it didn't get stale. But cut it up this way. You want it kind of in thick pieces, because it has to make kind of like a pudding, which is, you know, bread pudding, right? <laughs> All right. Okay, now Mama would soak her bread and she would mush it and put it in, but this is the way I've learned to do it. Of course, you know how daughters are, they never listen to their mamas, so this is how we do it. Now, okay. okay. Now to this bowl, I'm just gonna cut up, well, no, I'm not gonna cut up any eggs, I'm gonna crack some eggs. Now, I'm not a good egg cracker. I never learned how to do this one hand job, so just have to bear with me. Okay, I'm gonna use my whisk. I don't know how people ever did without whisk in the old days, because I sure never could, okay? Then I'm gonna put my sugar in here. Beat that up real good, okay, like this. Add some, well, you can use raisins or apples or anything you want in here. Fresh peaches are wonderful to use in this, but like I said, we didn't have that in the old days. We just had the raisins, so that's what I'm using. Now to this, I'm gonna add my milk. And just pour it in here with my melted butter. All right. Of course, now most of the time, I like to add vanilla flavor to this, but Mama didn't, so this is her original recipe, so I'm just gonna go ahead and use it like this, okay? Now, I'm gonna pour this over here. Pour all that together. You pat it down. Make sure that bread is just good and soaked. You have to kind of play with it. <laughs> That's it. Now, okay. Now, even though the bread is hard, it's gonna soften when you pour the milk over it. Of course, you kinda throw your, throw your raisins all over, okay? Now, all right, I've got my pudding all mixed. It's ready to go in the oven, but before I put the pudding in the oven, I'm gonna fix a pan, well, I did already. I put the pan of water in the oven before I turned the oven on. And what that has to do with this is that you let the pan of water right underneath in the bottom tray of the oven. And then you set your pudding right on top of it and it keeps the moisture in your pudding. You don't want to ever let your puddings get dry because that's not good. But anyway, when you, oh, stick it up. When you put this in the oven at 350 degrees, for about an hour and you check it periodically and you let it get a golden brown on top. So I'm gonna do that now. I 
Okay, now I haven't made any sauces for this because actually we didn't know what a sauce was when I was growing up. We knew what gravy was because all Cajuns knew what gravy was. But now we have all these fancy sauces introduced and of course we have the lemon sauce and the whiskey sauce and the rum sauce, but that's okay. I love those. When I'm in restaurants, I go ahead, but at home I never do because this was the plain bread pudding that my daddy enjoyed. We always use the leftover bread. So let me check this. Ooh, yes, cameraman's nightmare. Okay. Yeah, the cabbage is just fine. This is how I like it. Melissa will just have to do without her cabbage today because this is for mama. Now. I guess we'll just go ahead and season this in a bit. Let me check my crab stew. Ooh, look at this. See those gorgeous Louisiana crabs? Look at that claw. Ooh, wow. Can't wait to eat that. Okay. Now, let me get this out of the way. Of course, I've got my beautiful salad. It's not that beautiful because Cajuns didn't worry about what their food looked like. It's just what it tasted. This is the cabbage that I've cooked to accommodate this meal. And with the miracle of television, I have the bread pudding, voila. So this is the gorgeous bread pudding that we're going to eat. But this is gonna be the best yet. So, whoo, messy cook. I guess I must be a good cook because they say all good cooks are messy cooks. I've got the wonderful shrimp. Look at that, I wanted that crab claw. I told you I was gonna get it. Lots of gravy on that rice, you know. Make sure your gravy is real thick. It's not a gumbo. Gumbos are thin and uh, stews are thick. So that's the difference. Same root, but just a different consistency in your gravy. Man, I think that ought to fix me up for today, really. So I'm gonna get me a spoon here. All right. All righty, so I taste this. Mmm, I bet it's good. It sure smells good. Pass the test. Mmm. I'm now visiting the Acadian village in Lafayette, Louisiana, where they have the authentic Cajun homes that were brought here from way out in the country where the old Cajuns lived. And these are here for the public to enjoy and for people to understand what Cajun life was like many years ago. Of course, this is at the Thibodeau Mansion, which is the Thibodeau House. And of course, we have the bedroom downstairs for the mama and the daughters and the father, of course, and we also have the kitchen here. Then upstairs, the boys' rooms were there, where the mother had their loom in order to weave. The father's nets for crawfishing and crabbing and such were also made up there. So this is very unique in itself. So I will be reading you Brenda Durham's letter from Baton Rouge, and this is what Brenda says. Dear Miss Lucy, your cooking show is so authentic and brings back such wonderful memories. My Creole heritage is so similar to yours. My parents were born and reared in Opelousas and rain. And though they lacked money, they were rich in love, creativity, and joie de vie. Your beautiful accent is like music to my ears. May God continue to bless you with success on your show. Respectfully, Brenda Trahan Durham. Thank you so much, Brenda, for writing to me. I really appreciate your letter. And two, I appreciate you, my viewers, and I hope that you continue to join me next week, Sha. See you then. up on the World Wide Web at lpb.org. The Louisiana Seafood Marketing Board is a proud sponsor of Lucy's Classic Cajun Culture and Cooking Show. The Bayou State enjoys an outstanding culinary tradition. At the center of that tradition is seafood. And no wonder, Louisiana is one of the nation's leading seafood suppliers. 
and the Louisiana Department of Economic Development. Whether it's crawfish processing or meat packing, Louisiana is the business location for food processing with infrastructure, site selection assistance, and workforce training. Louisiana, the shape of food technology.